Minesweeper. I remember playing this game on Windows XP. Good times. So today we're gonna make our own Minesweeper. Let's begin. Let's start this project by declaring some constants. The game will have 8 columns and 8 rows. Each cell will be 8 by 8 pixels and we're gonna resize everything by 8. I kinda like that number. Ok, we have a big empty square. Let's fill it up with smaller squares. To do that, I made a class for cells, called cell. And I also made a class for the game field, called field. The field class has only one function for now, which is the draw function. And it's working pretty well. Wait a minute, is he using a vector? Of vectors? You know what? I'm gonna ignore this amazing video he made and focus on this one mistake. Okay, stop. So some of you guys didn't like me using two-dimensional vectors. So instead I, as a professional, made a new function to make it easier to access cells in the vector. And I professionally used pointers, because only professionals like me can use pointers. No offense. Ok, it's time we add some mines to the game. We're gonna choose a random cell from the field. If the cell already has a mine in it, we'll go back and try again. For now we're just gonna show every mine as a red square. Alright, it's working. Let's run it one more time. And it's not working anymore. Great. Oh, I forgot to add this. There we go. Now we're gonna add numbers. For those who don't know, a number on the cell represents how many mines are around that cell. So for example, 1 means there's a mine on one of these cells. That's why people hate the number 8. Except me of course. Ok, every cell has a new function now which counts how many mines are surrounding that cell. Then it's gonna store that number in a variable. I also drew the numbers themselves. We'll choose and draw one of them based on the number of mines surrounding the cell. Let's see. Um, I'm pretty sure this is wrong. Ok, after some suffering I figured out why it wasn't working. The problem was I was using a one dimensional vector, thanks to somebody, <sighs> which causes some confusion. But I already fixed it, so everything is working as intended. Now we're gonna add the most important part of the gameplay, which is... Here's what's gonna happen. As soon as the left mouse button is released, we'll calculate the position of the cell under the cursor. Then we're gonna open that cell and see how many mines are surrounding it. If the number is 0, we'll simply open the neighboring cells, otherwise we won't. However, if it happens to be a mine, then the game will be over. Sounds simple, at least in theory. Here's the new opening function. I took the code from the mine counting function and slightly changed it. And here we're getting the position of the cell that should open. Now don't panic that you can't see the cells. This is intentional. Um, this is also intentional, don't worry. Ok, so the problem was I forgot that we had resized the window. And now it's working pretty well. Let's not forget that we should also draw closed cells. For that we'll simply change the color of the square when the cell is closed. Now this looks a lot better. The next thing we're gonna add is flagging. Flags are optional in this game. They help the player mark which cell they think has a mine. And to make things easier, I added a flag image inside the numbers texture. I also added a new variable for the flag in the cell class. And now we can flag everything we want. But we don't have to. Because the game is ignoring the mines anyway. Now to fix this, I made a new variable called game over. And we're gonna set it to 1 when the player opens a cell with a mine. Let's test it. Now it doesn't even acknowledge the existence of mines. Here's how I fixed this bug. That's it. So we've finished the game. Time to move on to the next step. The first thing I wanna change is the opening of the cells. Yes, I can open them. But I'm not feeling it. So I'm planning to change the cell's color to make it appear like a button. Here's the code which does exactly that. Let's see if it works or not. Well, it's not working. But you gotta admit, this looks cool. In order to fix this, we just need to reset the state of the cell after we draw it. Oh yeah, this is so much better. Now the next thing I wanna change is opening a cell with a mine. Because right now we're just showing a red square. That doesn't look satisfactory. I'm planning to show a small explosion after we open the cell, which will cause explosions on neighboring cells and so on. Let's do it. Every cell will have an explosion variable to know what stage of the explosion the cell is at. And we're gonna use that variable to draw the explosions themselves. But first we need to trigger the explosion and for that, we'll set the explosion variable to 1 when the player opens a cell with a mine. Alright, boring stuff aside, let's see the explosion! Wow! That's not what I was expecting. But still, wow. The reason it's not working is because I'm updating the explosion of each cell, even if they aren't triggered yet. Here's how I fixed it. Let's hope this works. Alright, attempt number 2! 
Um, what the hell just happened? Okay, I'm pretty sure this time I actually fixed it. Yes, yes, it's working! Now to make it look more interesting, let's add some randomness to it. We'll just randomly set the duration of each explosion. Are you ready for this? Oh yeah. This is why I became a programmer. To watch stuff like this. Okay, let's not get distracted. Now we're gonna let the player know how many mines are left. First we count how many cells are flagged using this function. Then we subtract that number from the total number of mines. And finally we're drawing it on the screen using the function from my Tetris project. As you can see, everything is working. Except for the fact that I forgot to change the number of mines. Let's try again. Are you kidding me? Okay, let's do some... First let's increase the size of the cells, here we go. We should also increase the numbers, so abracadabra. Oh yeah. Now I'm planning to add an effect for when the player wins. And it's gonna be similar to the explosion, so let's change every explosion to an effect. While I was doing that, I also optimized the explosion drawing code. Let's see. Um. While I was doing that, I also optimized the explosion drawing code. I hate myself. Alright, I fixed it. Now let's add the victory effect. We're gonna add a winning condition to the cell opening function which will trigger the effect. Then we'll change the color of the effect when the player wins. Here's how it looks in the game. Beautiful. Now to make it more obvious, we're gonna show a text informing the player that he lost or won the game after the effect ends. Ok, we almost finished the game. The last thing we need to fix is that we can die from the first click. We just need to generate mines when the player is about to open the first cell, so that we can ignore that cell. Ok, the game is finished. But I still feel like something's missing. Then I remembered that Minesweeper on Windows XP had this little guy. And I wanna bring him back. Oh my god, look at this handsome face. You know what, he needs a name. Handsome male names. Um, Alexander. Yeah, he's gonna be Alexander. Alright, now the game is officially done. We have cells, we have numbers, we have text, and we have Alexander. God, he's amazing. So that's basically it. The code is in the description. Go check it out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe because 99% of you aren't subscribed, which makes sense, but still. And also, 